Hello everyone. Let us extend the topic pair of straight lines what we had in the last term to some further extent. And in this session, we will be taking angle between the lines. When I say lines, pair of lines. That goes without saying. That. Now, if we have to find angle between the lines, where combined equation of the lines is given as ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equal to 0. Or also ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. Means any of the forms suppose is given to you as the joint equation of the straight lines. And if theta is the angle between those two lines, then tan theta, and straight away giving you formula, is absolute value of 2 under root h square minus ab upon a plus b. Now, absolute value I am just writing only to say that if theta is acute angle. If you do not use absolute value and in case you get answer for tan theta as negative value, that means theta what you have found is the obtuse angle between the two lines. Now, 2 under root h square minus ab upon a plus b. a plus b appears in the denominator. From here also certain conclusions on your own you can find. Like if a plus b appears in the denominator, obviously for getting value of tan theta, I will have to write a plus b not equal to 0. But if a plus b is 0, then what? That means you will not be in position to find tan theta. What does that imply? That says that lines must be perpendicular. I mean such conclusions you can find out on your own also. So let me start with one illustration only to understand that how we are going to use the formula. Find the angle between the lines which are represented by 2x square minus 7x y plus 3y square equal to 0. Now understand this. This is of the form ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equal to 0. That form actually is not so important whether lines pass through origin or not passing through origin type. I am just taking your attention to the fact that a is 2, b is 3 and 2h is minus 7. Right? Now you will have to apply the formula. So h is minus 7 by 2, a and b as 2 and 3 respectively. We will be starting for the solution. Now tan theta would be 2 under root h square minus ab upon a plus b substitute values there and simplify that leads to tan theta equal to 1. Now, I am just taking your attention to one fact that 2x square term and 3y square term that has already given me the hint that lines are not perpendicular and hence I actually went for tan theta formula. In case anywhere you observe that 2x square term and 2y square terms, such terms are present there, that means lines are perpendicular. Then of course, in that case, no need of applying formula. Straight away, you can take those two lines as the perpendicular ones. Okay, so tan theta equal to 1 would lead to theta equal to 45 degree. Simple straight application of the formula. Now let us move for the next from here. And that is important notes. Means once you read the formula, what all things come to your mind? Formula is tan theta equal to 2 under root h square minus ab upon a plus b. I am going to use this. If h square equal to ab, what would it lead to? It would lead to tan theta equal to 0. When you say tan theta equal to 0, that means angle between the lines is 0. And hence, lines would be coincident. If lines are perpendicular, that I have already mentioned, that a plus b must be equal to 0. That means coefficient of x square plus coefficient of y square equal to 0. Now, if lines are equally inclined, then what happens? ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equal to 0. From here, you can always write auxiliary equation, bm square plus 2hm plus a equal to 0. And you remember m1 plus m2 would be some of the roots and some of the roots will have in it coefficient h and if h is 0 then m1 plus m2 is 0 and hence lines are equally inclined. I hope you can get that actual explanation why I am saying that two lines are equally inclined if h is 0 and lines represented by ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0 they are parallel. Now condition some part is from the coincident only that is h square equal to ab and an additional part is a f square equal to bg square means a f square equal to bg square and h square equal to ab would lead to the conclusion that lines are nothing but the parallel lines okay so should we go for the next the next one is we want to find equations for bisectors of the angle between pair of lines obviously i may have to take two different cases joint equation of the bisectors of the angle if you have been given homogeneous form means ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equal to 0. 
Mind you, please hear the entire explanation or derivation I may not be giving you. I generally tend to give in the classroom also. Only that part which, I mean of the derivation I am saying, which would help you in problem solving. In problem solving, if the same steps you are going to take, then it makes some sense to take the derivation part. Otherwise, from competitive examination point of view, you may straight away take formula also because that would save your time. Though I am not a person who uses formula much, but still I am saying at times formula is important, right? And the formula is x square minus y square upon a minus b equal to xy upon h. This is the standard formula for joint equation of the bisectors of the angles between the two given them. Now, obviously there would be two bisectors. One would be for the acute angle and other one would be for the obtuse angle and their combined equation is given as x square minus y square upon a minus b equal to xy upon h. This formula, if you read twice, thrice, you will remember. So, it's better that we write equation if perhaps required in the form hx square minus a minus b times xy minus hy square equal to 0. Can you observe something? Here terms are x square, xy and y square. So, obviously, equation would be satisfied by the origin. So, basically, if lines pass through the origin, obviously, bisectors also will pass through the origin. Correct? Now, let us move further and make some observations, quick observations. What first one you can take as? If A and B are equal, then middle term will vanish. A minus B into XY term will vanish and you will be simply left with X square minus Y square equal to 0. That leads to Y equal to plus minus X. Or I can say Y equal to X and Y equal to minus X. These would be the two lines which would work as bisectors of the angles. And if H equal to 0, then what will happen? Then term of X square and term of Y square would vanish. And you would be simply left with the middle term. And middle term is actually A minus B into XY, right? A minus B need not be 0. My conclusion should be XY equal to 0. That means this will give me X axis and Y axis. Y equal to 0 would be X axis and X equal to 0 would be Y axis. So, X axis and Y axis means coordinate axis would work as bisectors, okay? Let us move to the next. And the next one must be the illustration that how we actually going to use the formula. And the form equation here given as 2x square minus 7xy plus 3y square equal to 0. This is joint equation of the lines. And what are we expected to find? The joint equation of the bisectors. Just apply straight away formula. x square minus y square upon a minus b equal to xy upon h. So obviously we will need a, b and h. a is 2, b is 3 and h is minus 7 by 2. Substitute in the formula x square minus y square upon a minus b. That a minus b becomes 2 minus 3 equal to xy upon h. h is replaced by minus 7 by 2 and simplified. The simplified form would be 7x square minus 2xy minus 7y square equal to 0. I hope this part is clear to you. Okay. So, we move to the next and the next one is expected to be joint equation of the bisectors of the angles between the lines when you are given non-homogeneous form. When I say non-homogeneous form, what type of equation you are expected to have with you? Ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. This is joint equation of the lines. And what we have to find is joint equation of the angle bisectors. And joint equation of the angle bisectors is x minus alpha whole square minus y minus beta whole square upon a minus b equal to x minus alpha into y minus beta upon h, right? What are alpha and beta here? Alpha comma beta is the point of intersection of those two lines. So, here x minus alpha whole square minus y minus beta whole square upon a minus b. If you relate with that x square minus y square upon a minus b, where is the difference? The difference is here x is replaced by x minus alpha, y is replaced by y minus beta. So, frankly, you can remember even this formula straight away x minus alpha whole square minus y minus beta whole square upon a minus b equal to and the right hand side previously was x y upon h. Now here it becomes x minus alpha y minus beta upon h. My suggestion actually to you is that you can remember this formula if lines pass through origin then obviously alpha comma beta would be replaced by 0 comma 0 and you will get x square minus y square upon a minus b equal to x y upon h then find the form you make it. So, choice is yours. If you want to remember two separate formulas, go ahead. Now, here I end my session and next time when we come, 
I think we should try more and more problems. Hope you enjoyed this session. If you have liked the video, please click on this side to subscribe. And if you want to place an order for the book, please click on this side. Thank you.